could choose between soccer, uh, long distance, uh, long distance like uh, cross country or football. I want to say I was about four years old. And the reason why I wanted to play is because like my parents had signed me up. It wasn't until my junior year of high school where I actually tried to make an attempt and be serious about it. Um, and from my junior year on, um, it's kind of my primary sport. Um, I didn't really start playing football seriously until around my freshman year of high school. Looking back, high school football was was fun because didn't really have to care at the end of the day. Well, my junior year, I was the first where I really experienced playing offensive line, and ever since then, it's kind of been it's just kind of been an uphill for that. You know, I found something I really loved, uh, offensive line. I really I really enjoyed protecting, and I just really just really enjoyed that. And then my junior year, kind of got away from defense, but focused on offense. And my senior year, just focused on offensive line, and that's where I ended up here. Probably the state championship game that we played in. Um, we lost in the state semifinals the year before, and so that whole off season we were just kind of bitter. Um, had a, a chip on our shoulder, and going through the season, going into the season, um, there was a lot of people that thought we had something to prove. Um, we were a really small boarding school in Virginia. Um, pretty much everyone on our team that started played both ways, and so no one really expected us to to play the level we played to. And I think one of the main reasons was because we lost in the state semifinals and because we had our chip on our shoulder, and then. Once we got to the state championship game, it was it was very it was a very emotional game because um, it was the first time our school had ever played in the state championship game, and I ended up tearing my meniscus in the the third quarter of the game, and I spent most of the third quarter in the locker room getting looked at, and there was just a nervous feeling in my stomach the whole time I was in there because I just wanted to be out there on the on the field with my team so bad and. Uh, when I finally got back out of the locker room, it was probably like halfway through the fourth, and we were up by 25, 30 points, and that's when I just kind of knew that we were going to win the state championship, and it was just a, a surreal feeling. As I grew, the more pressure I got, the more responsibility I had, and it was like I was the second quarterback on the team. I was just comfortable in the system. I knew the offense. You know, I knew the coaches since I was like in third grade, so it was just like, you know, real, I was really relaxed, really. I didn't feel pressure. I was just at home playing, playing the game I loved. My senior year state championship game, after we won, uh, we went 15-0 and and won the state championship uh, for the third time in a row. And just kind of looking around at the guys that I kind of grew up with and realizing how far we've come since we were young kids to where like half of us or even more were going on to play college football. And we had just won the biggest achievement you can have in high school football, which is a state championship. So it's just a special moment for all of us. Freshman year, when I first started playing football, obviously I wasn't, I wasn't recruited by anybody because I just started playing football. But what my dad did, and he took me to, a, he took me to a lot of summer football, college football camps. My, um, my uh, summer before my sophomore year, and we went to the Villanova football camp. That's where he played our college basketball, and I received an offer, my first offer there. And right after then, that's when everything started exploding. Fun time, stressful time at the same time. Um, I got my first offer around March of my junior year from the University of Houston. I was excited. Um, you know, what I mean, at that time, once you once you realize you you have the, the potential to be a college athlete, then it's just like whoever offers you, you start to fall in love with. So. I got recruited by everyone, but some people questioned how tall I was or how if my frame could hold weight. So I kind of had to go through that struggle. And then eventually, uh, I got recruited by uh, Wake Forest, um, Temple. Uh, some D1AA's and Stanford and UVA all recruited me as well. You know the craziest thing is, I got a lot of letters from a lot of schools. I got, I got Michigan, you know, Penn State, Oregon, um, Boston College, Nebraska, Ohio State, Alabama, Rutgers, all of them. But the craziest thing is, it was nice to receive letters, but for about three years until my senior year, I didn't receive any offers. Villanova was my only offer. When spring ball started my junior year, I think I want to say 95, between 95 and 100 scouts were at our spring practices, spring scrimmages, um, prospect looking at me and a, a safety, uh, Jamal Adams, who's playing at LSU now, and it was just fun. You know, we just took it as, you know, they're just spectators, and we just had we just had fun, played our game, and then once some offers started coming in, I, I think I got up to about 14. 
Um, and then I had some schools that were on the fence. A lot of schools were only taking one running back that year. So I was just, you know, I was starting to narrow down, but at the same time, I was still open to anything. I was just like blessed and thankful for all the opportunity that every school gave me. Uh, Wake Forest is one that really just believed in me from the beginning. So I kind of rolled with them at the end. Well, I was born and adopted in Winston-Salem. Um, that was a really big factor to me because no matter where I went, whether it was Boston College, Virginia Tech, UVA, wherever I was being recruited, no place felt like home, like Winston-Salem did. Um, there was just a, a feeling of just being comfortable walking around campus. And another big decision factor was um, when my grandfather died in 2010. He died in the hospital um, right down the road. And I had never came back to Winston until I started getting recruiting, recruited and it took me out in the field for on our official visits. They had like all the lights on, they were like playing a highlight video and that was the first time I was ever really like at peace and be able to like lay that to rest and that was like a, a big decision for me because it had been such a uneasy factor in my life because I mean my grandfather was named after him, I was kind of like his, his namesake and in a way it was really important to me to be close to where he lived and spent his whole life. It was about May of my junior year. I talked to my dad, I was like, Dad, man, there's, I don't think there's anyone else coming. I want to commit before my senior year. So I was just like, I think I want to go up to Villanova and commit to them. My dad was like, you sure? He was like, I was like, yeah, I'm sure. So we started making phone calls and we were about to go up there. And then a couple of days later, my coach comes in, pulls me out of class and says, hey, Justin, you received an offer from Rutgers. I'm just like, what the hell is Rutgers? I've never heard of them before a day in my life. And come to find out, you know, they're going to the Big Ten, and I was just like, oh, wow, it's exciting. So I went up there, I committed on the spot. Um, but then after that, that's when things got even more crazier. And so I took took my first official visit to University of Kentucky. Loved it there. Um, then after that official, that next week, I tore my ACL. So then, you know, once the news broke, schools started calling, pulling their scholarships, and uh, the only schools that really stuck around were, it was Wake, Kentucky, Nevada, and Texas State. They want, those two schools wanted to do a gray shirt. So I came, Coach Duffy was recruiting me from Wake, um, who's out at Oklahoma State. And I came here and I just fell in love with it. And I just knew that, you know, if I never played another down in football, that this was a place like, where I knew I could get the best education and like find success off the field. It's crazy, so you hear about all these people decommitting from colleges and you know, you think, oh, when I commit, I'm not decommitting. Well, <laughs> I did everything my uh, my recruitment process. I committed somewhere, stayed with them for a very long time and I decommitted and and yeah, and that process was difficult too. So why, the big reason why I decommitted from Rutgers was just the fact that they fired my coaches. Um, one went to the pros, one, day, one of them got fired. Um, so, and there was nothing really else holding me up there. I, I just didn't feel at home, you know? I was just like, oh, it was just like in the spirit of the moment type thing, everything looked nice. I was like, oh, I wanna go here. But I didn't fit in. And that's when other schools came in. That's when I got offers from like Maryland, uh, Penn State, uh, Wake Forest, Indiana, Purdue, um, and Boston College, um, Old Dominion. That's when I got offers from them. Um, but then, you know, some told me like, Wake Forest is the place for you. I was just like, okay. So I went on, I came here on official visit, fell in love with the place. I actually met a couple of offensive linemen that I'm playing with right now. And some of them, some of them remember me, some of them don't, but it was cool. But uh, I met a lot of, I met a lot of good, met a lot of good people and I fell in love with the school. And so I committed and came to Wake Forest. For, between high school and college, it's really just the size of the players and the speed of the game. And uh, you just realize the defensive ends get bigger, the the cornerbacks get bigger, the safeties get bigger, everyone just gets bigger. I think it was the experience level of everybody else because only playing two years, um, there's people on the team that's been playing football since middle school, even before that, and Pop Warner Leagues, and coming here and only playing two years and just re really being fresh and new to the game of football, I didn't have the experience most people did. The speed of the game probably is the biggest change. Um, and then, the time you put into it. Uh, high school is kind of like, you know, you had that 
that was instead of PE or whatever other sport you had your football period you know you watch film you did everything inside that period weightlifting um but now in college it's a lot more it's a lot more time consuming you're a lot more is expected out of you um you got to be strong to play the game you got to be smart you really got to be able to read defenses know where the blitz is coming from in high school you kind of get away because if a high school had a good had a stud linebacker if they're blitzing they're only bringing him so it's just the game just became you know you just ha just have to get educated in the game i think it was kind of the hardest part the process of getting to play has been a really long hard physically and emotionally draining process i mean you come in as a freshman and like i said before you, you were the best player on your high school team and a lot of a lot of the times you're one of the best players in your conference and coming here and having that same everybody being at that same level it kind of slaps you in the face at first um we had a coach that used to say oh that was your welcome to college football play and i think mine was on the the second day of full pads practice where i just got put on my butt by a senior linebacker and that's when i kind of knew that this wasn't high school football anymore um people were bigger they were faster they were stronger and that's just something you have to you have to be a man and say, I mean, there's nothing that can change us but hard work. The biggest difference, a lot of people would say, is the physical aspect of it. You know, once you get, for me, yeah, it only takes you, yeah, you gotta get hit once and then you're ready to go. Okay, this is what the physicalness is. When I came in, um, I obviously wanted to play right away, but uh, I ended up getting redshirted to help, kind of just help mature me and put weight on me and kind of help me adapt to college football. And uh, through that, I think I grew just tremendously, like, I, I'm such a fan of the red shirt just because you kind of can mature as a player and a person and really grow into what you're supposed to be come freshman year for football. It's been a rocky road. Um, first got here, I was excited. Thought I was going to have a chance to play as a true freshman. Uh, ended up torn my Achilles in the beginning of the camp, so missed my whole true freshman year um, being injured and recovering. The past three years, it's just been hard work, it's been grinding. Um, and to finally get on the field um, this past season, it was such a rewarding experience because of all the hard work that I put in on scout team. Um, basically just getting my butt kicked by the seniors in the upperclassmen every single day at practice. Um, you can go out there with attitude, say you hate this, you don't want to do this, but at the same time, if you put your effort into it, you're going to be a better player because of it. And because I went out there and, and really worked and really tried hard during those, um, those practices where I was on the scout team and I was going against the older guys, um, I feel like I benefited a lot because of it. And uh, for me, it just helped me be able to have a, a solid redshirt freshman year where I was able to do some things, caught some passes, and score some touchdowns. So I'm just really excited to build on that going forward. It's cops to dodge in the city of God to reach the goals of these soccer stars. It's records to break, medals to take. Sheridan with that last touchdown catch now has four receptions by a Wake Forest tight end than any other player in Diva Deacon history does in a single season. Yo God down here, whom shall I fear? It's foretold by Kalorja, the old most Bronx tales don't end well, especially when you... And Serenade, first down, they'll move the chains right across the middle, and Cam Serenade, the freshman tight end, refusing to go down. On training day, I go too hard, ask Antoine, who crawl? I am Godzilla of these favelas, new car, flow. Um, the night before, I, I probably slept two hours. Like I said, it was the first time I ever knew, like, hey, tomorrow you're going to be playing in a college game. And so just I, I felt like the 10-minute the bus ride from the, from the stadium back to the field took two hours. I feel like the Deacon walk to the locker room took half an hour. Everything was just so slowed down and so over dramatized in my mind that when I, when it was time to run out of the gates, I felt like I had been waiting two weeks since I woke up that morning to take the field, and it was a very emotional experience because as I was running out of the gate, I always tried to find my parents in the stands, and it was almost like, and it takes me sometimes a quarter, quarter and a half to find them, but it was like as soon as I ran out of the tunnel, I just made eye contact with my with my family and. I can, I can, I saw like how proud they were and the looks in their eyes, and um, I think that's probably what made me play so good in that game, was just seeing how how proud they were and how happy they were that I was basically playing my first ever college game. 
protection. Yeah. Once again, Wake Forest in the left tackle. Will Smith working one-on-one -on -one with Vic Beasley. Pretty impressive early. Finally got my chance to play against Florida State. Um, had a fun time playing. Started five of the last six games of the season. Um, you know, just really struggled staying healthy this whole time. But it's been a great experience. I'm still working, still trying to earn my spot. Um, but I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the process. I'm enjoying the guys along the way. And, you know, I'm, I'm living a childhood dream. That seven-yard run by Wortham was the longest of the day. Trying to be the best player I can be, being a contributor, that's the biggest thing. I just want to be a, a contributor and be able to help this team win. You know, I want to be a factor where, okay, he helped this team win. You know, I'm not saying, oh, I'm going to do this and do I want to I want to be all this and all that. I don't like making accolades early. I like to say first for me comes winning, you know, winning and comes everything else. I really do want to be one of the best uh, to play the position and uh, tight end, and I want to try to help Wake Forest win um, championships here, and that's my biggest and like main goal is help win here at Wake Forest. One of the main, another reason why I pick Wake is because being this smallest FBS school, we're always the underdog, and I feel like in my life I've always been an underdog. I've always been someone who has achieved things that people didn't think they would achieve, and that's one thing I, I've wanted during my career here at Wake was to win an ACC championship. I want to get to a bowl. Um, you know, I've had friends that play college ball, and they say there's there's nothing like playing in a bowl game, nothing like playing in a conference championship game. Um, so those are small steps first. Want to you know want to get to a conference championship, want to get to a bowl game. You know, be nice to be able to be in that top that top small percentage of the country, and you know have a chance to play for the the um, college national championship. But really, from a personal scheme, I just want to. You know, keep enjoying the game. I want to play for as long as I can. Hopefully that I'm good enough at this level to continue my career on to the next. And, you know, get in the end zone a couple times, celebrate with the big guys, you know, win a couple games, just have fun. Like one word that can describe like everything that you, like how you felt about football so far, just for your whole entire career since you were a kid, what would that word be and why? Perseverance. Perseverance. I have to say it's a blessing. Blessing. That's what I would say. I just say amazing for the good and the bad, you know. You can't play a game like college football and be easily discouraged because there's going to be a lot of times where life, you get knocked down, you might get knocked down on a play, you might miss a block, you might give up, give up a sack, but that can't affect your mindset, that can't affect who you are as a person. And so I think throughout my career, through setbacks and missed opportunities. Um, perseverance has always been a big key for me because my freshman year, sophomore year, when I wasn't playing, when I thought I should have been playing, when there was better people in front of me, if I didn't have that perseverance, I didn't have that determination, and I, I could have just packed it up and said, Yo, you know, these next three years, I'm just gonna focus on getting my degree and then get out of here. I wouldn't be in the position I am now. It's all you know, God's gift, like giving you the ability to do what you can do. You know, like I give me the ability to, you know, be tall, have long arms, or any, or even have my ability to move. It's just, it's a blessing, you know. And it's just like, you couldn't get anywhere without, you know, without God's help and stuff like that. So I would just say a blessing. Terrible things have happened, but it's been like amazing that these things have happened and amazing that I've been able to come back from them. And all the positive things that have happened, it's just been amazing that I've been able to you know, to make that certain player and make it to this level or make it to this point in my, in my career. So I think amazing would be a, a suitable word.